Good afternoon and welcome to our last meeting of March. The weather's nice outside and we have a, a full house in here today. And uh, we also hopefully have a lot of people watching this on our Electric City Television. Invocation tonight will be given by Councilmember Buck Roberts with respect to the flag led by Councilmember Tony Stewart. Please rise. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. We're giving you the blessings for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. Be with us as we conduct this meeting. Be with this council. Be with our firemen, our policemen, keep them safe. Dear Lord, and be with our national leaders, our world leaders, to come to one goal, and that's to stop the fighting. We ask these things in your holy name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get into the body of our meeting, we have a couple of presentations, and I told someone as I, I told uh, Nancy when we walked in, he said that the the room is already looking a lot better because of the girls <laughs> in here. So, um, but it is a very proud moment that we have. We occasionally get to recognize some, some folks in our in our community, and right now we get to recognize the Anderson University women's basketball team. You know, and you guys had a great year. We appreciate. Uh, most of these guys were up here were athletes, so they can understand, you know, where you come from as far as working as a team to um, get a goal accomplished. You guys had a good year. Um, just some highlights. Um, overall record, 27 and 5, very impressive. Um, and, and I like this one more than anything. You were picked sixth in the sack, right? But won the conference with a 20 and 2 record. That means somebody did a lot of good things, and that should be um, commended. In between that, um, you had an 18-game winning streak. Now I heard um, somebody else say that that was at that time that was the longest winning streak outside of the University of Kentucky's men's basketball team. So that was pretty impressive too. They qualified for the Southeast Regional NCAA Division II tournament, where they beat the number three team in the nation by the score of 71 to 53 in the round of 32. But they eventually lost to the sweet, uh, lost in the sweet, sweet 16 to the number two team in the nation. But that's okay. They're now ranked number one. So you know um, that's that's something positive there. Um, head coach Jimmy Garrity was named Coach of the Year in the SAC, and also um, Sierra Simpson was named Player of the Year in the SAC. So um, yeah, that's, we should give a hand right now for all of them. And what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to ask the coach to come up and say a few words, if you would. Uh, thank you very much. We really appreciate you guys having us here. It's quite an honor for us to be here, um, to be represented uh, uh, for the university. Uh, these are great representations of Anderson students and the community of Anderson. And uh, we had a fantastic season. And I know you had mentioned early on we were picked sixth preseason. And, uh, you know, it's a funny story because the girls got mad at me. <laughs> and we were in the huddle one time, and like, I'm like, girls, what's, what's going on here? Coach, you really think we're – because my comments, you know, you got to be politically correct when you're talking to the press. Yeah, it's probably about where we need to be. And, and all the time I'm thinking <laughs> – Hey, we're pretty good. We're going to win this thing. <laughs> and I got called out by my players. Coach, you don't think we're good enough to win? That? No, that's not what I said. That is what you said. <laughs> but it was an unbelievable year because um, you got to do that, right? you got to do that. Then. But all along, I knew that we were going to be a good team. And about 
sometime in January, I felt like we were good enough to win the league at that point and continuing on with the path that we were taking. And I, we, we huddled up in the locker room, and I told them, if, if you, guys, you guys are good right now, and we might win the league playing just as we are, but if you guys decide to play for one another, I mean really play for one another, and let that be your motivation, we could have a really special year. And they bought into that. And one of the best things that I can say about this group of young ladies is that they care about one another. And when you get a locker room full of 13 players that care about each other on and off the court, um, a big motivation for them is they don't want to let the person down beside them and across from them. And when you have that in the locker room, some really special things can happen. And we had a really special year, and I was so proud to be their coach. Um, and, you know, we're going to build upon this. Um, they have set the bar high for um, Anderson women's basketball. And uh, there's going to be a lot of expectations for them in the off season, which um, I know they're ready for that challenge. And uh, we look forward to the future of Anderson women's <coughs> basketball and representing the university and the community uh, with continued success. Um, I know that I think Tony had mentioned that he might want the girls to say yeah. something. Is that are we getting yeah. too long here on that? <laughs> no. no. Sure? First okay. of all, I, I, I have a proclamation here that, that basically says some of the same, same things that we just said. I won't read it, but hopefully you'll find a good place in, in, in the athletic office to, to hang out, maybe in your office, Coach. Well, that sounds fantastic. Good. We really appreciate it. <laughs> What I would like, maybe we can start over here, if you ladies could come up and just tell us who you are and maybe where your hometown is. Maybe we can start. <laughs> hey, Mayor, Mayor, have them come around and shake their hand when they come through. All right, well, I'm Jen, Jennifer Monroe from Clemson. Jen, would you go right here and shake these guys' hands? Do I'm Sierra Simpson from Simpsonville. I am Madison Floyd from the Alpins. I am Jacqueline Moore from Lisbon, New York. I am Leslie Woods from Raleigh, North Carolina. Congratulations on Alpins. I'm Heather Jankai from Ohio, South Carolina. Congratulations. I am Nikki Young from Taylor's. Congratulations on Alpins. I'm Bailey Sands from Charlotte, North Carolina. Congratulations. 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 I'm Jasmine Rayner from Vanceboro, North Carolina. So proud of Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm Kaylee Kirkbrick from New Bern, North Carolina. I'm Katie Davis from Wake Forest, North Carolina. Congratulations. I'm Jasmine Franklin from Greenville, South Carolina. Congratulations. Good job. I'm Alexis Dillett from Taylor, South Carolina. Congratulations. Congratulations. Outstanding year. Congratulations. I'm Megan Madison. I'm from Boxburg, Virginia. Monica Winkler from Wahala, South Carolina. Congratulations on outstanding year. I love watching you play. I am Amanda Paris, one of the assistants, and I'm from Rome. Congratulations. Good job. Hi, I'm assistant coach Mike Merrill, and I'm from Hendersonville, North Carolina. Congratulations. Good job. Congratulations. Great year. Good job. Congratulations. Congratulations. You guys did an outstanding job. Keep up the good work. Congratulations, family. Good job. Congratulations. Great job. That's the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to do a couple of proclamations in regards to the Fair Housing Month and National Community Development Week and I think Erica Kraft and Michael That's Cunningham are going to come up. I think I'll read the proclamations first and then you guys can make comments. Is that okay? Um, the, the pro this proclamation is, uh, whereas the month of April is recognized throughout the United States of America as Fair Housing Month, and whereas Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, as amended, set forth a national policy of fair housing without regard to race, color, national origin, religion, sex, family status, or disability, and whereas both 
state and federal offices in the Department of Housing and Urban Development continue their efforts to promote and educate as many citizens as possible about every person's right to equal opportunity in housing, ensuring that all Americans have opportunities to achieve the American dream of home ownership. Whereas the city of Anderson continues to firmly further fair housing for its citizens. Now, therefore, I, Terrence V. Roberts, Mayor of the City of Anderson, and my fellow council members do hereby proclaim April of 2015 as Fair Housing Month in the City of Anderson for the significance of fair housing to our way of life and encourage all citizens to observe and support both the letter and spirit of fair housing as an expression of the individual rights guaranteed by the United States Constitution in the state of South Carolina. Signed this 23rd day of March of 2015. And we'll go directly into the next proclamation, which reads, whereas the week of April 6th through the 11th of 2015 has been designated as National Community Development Week by the National Community Development Association to celebrate the Community Development Block Grant, the CDBG program, and the Home Investment Partnership, the HOME program. And whereas the CDBG program provides annual funding and flexibility to local communities to provide decent, safe, and sanitary housing, a suitable living environment, and economic opportunities to low and moderate income people. And whereas the Home Investment Partnership Program provides funding in local communities to create decent, safe, and affordable housing opportunities for low-income persons. Nationally, over one million units of affordable housing have been completed using home funds. And whereas over the past five years, our community has received a total of over $3.1 million in CDBG funds and over $600,000 in home funds. And whereas the following activities include ownership, occupied housing rehab, infrastructure improvement, economic development, acquisition of real property, relocation, and fair housing have been funded by CDBG. And whereas in our community and in communities throughout the nation, 41 years of community development block grant program funding has been developed has developed a strong network of relationships among local governments, residents, business, and nonprofit organizations. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the city of Anderson designates the week of April 6th through April 11th of 2015 as National Community Development Week in support of these two valuable programs that have made tremendous contributions to the viability of housing stock, infrastructure, public services and economic vitality of our community. Be it further resolved that this community urges Congress and the administration to recognize the outstanding work being done locally and nationally by the CDBG program and the Home Investment Program by supporting increased funding for both of these programs for the fiscal year 2016. Signed on this 23rd day of March. Mayor, I'd uh, just like to say that the community development program has been uh, active in our community since 1978 and has allowed us to do numerous projects as the mayor outlined. And on a national level, our community has received recognition in past years. And we were very fortunate for my former director, Willie Day, to have served as the National Community Development association's president um, so that is quite a prestige for a community our size uh, we are looking to host our cdbg celebration on wednesday april the 8th we will host that from 12 o'clock noon until 3 o'clock p.m and it will be held at the municipal business center uh, downstairs conference room it'll be a drop-in so feel free to come in and join our staff and learning more about community development we also have during that time frame a projects tour where we would like to go out in the community and show you what we've been doing as well as many of the local nonprofits that we partner with uh, Nehemiah Corporation Homes of Hope and others so we look forward to seeing you all there and thank council for its efforts 
And uh, very briefly, Mr. Mayor and City Council, um, I'm Michael Cunningham. I'm the chair of the Community Housing Resource Board. And first, I'd like to thank you not only for the proclamations, but for longstanding support of the Community Housing Resource Board, both in staffing and uh, office space for us, but also in support of all the programs that we are engaged in um, in the effort to make sure that fair housing is one of our priorities. Um, on April the 7th, we will have a representative from HUD. Ms. Pat Green will be our speaker uh, at our fair housing forum. And then we are also planning um, a couple other fair housing forums on uh, landlord tenant workshop issues as well as um, uh, taking a look at affordable rental in the community for um, the month of June is what we're going to be planning on but once again we can't do what we do without the support of the city and we want to thank you for all of your long-standing support of, of our efforts and for doing more than just talking about fair housing uh, in a proclamation but demonstrating your commitment to it through your actions so thank you very much The, the minutes of the March 9th minutes meeting, March 9th, March 9th meeting, that's a tongue twister, <laughs> have been distributed. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Not hearing any, I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes of March the 9th stand approved. We have two items of old business and the first item is request second and third reading of ordinance 15-03 to rezone 612 North McDuffie Street from LO limited office to NC neighborhood commercial mr. Moore uh, just a couple of sentences about that mr. mayor is uh, you gave first reading to this at your March 9th meeting there's been no other discussion of it the building will be used has been used as an office in the past it does have adequate parking to accommodate the retail cigar shop and smoking lounge. So, again, we recommend these changes on second and third reading. Thank you. Um, any comments or discussion from council? Questions? Make a motion we approve it on second reading. First by Mr. Stewart, a second by Mr. Buck Roberts for a discussion. All those in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed? It passes unanimously on the second reading. Make a motion we accept it on third and final. Uh, first by Mr. Chapman. Second. Second by the Mayor Pro Tem. All those in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed? It passes unanimously on the third and final reading. A second item of old business to request consideration of an ordinance to revise the plan development district document for track A of the Mayfield located off of Harriet Circle. Mr. Moore. Just a couple of comments. Uh, the developer contacted the city late this afternoon. Um, what had happened, the developer was very proactive, had a community meeting of more than 40 people to come hear about those changes. Then the uh, planning commission denied the initial uh, request, and the developer has made some other changes based on the community meeting and the planning commission. Developers requested to extend this or postpone it for to the next meeting. He'd like to have a follow-up meeting with the folks who surround this area, which we think is a very positive move. Uh, we would apologize if anyone is here on behalf of that, but Maurice McKenzie is here. So if anybody's here, wants to be sure that we notify them for the developers' follow-up meeting, we'll make sure we got their names and any contact information. So again, uh, at the request of the developer, we would ask that you put this to your next meeting. <coughs> Thank you. I know that um, that was late notice, and, and hopefully we didn't inconvenience anybody that came out, but we will take that up at our next meeting. We have four items of new business, and that first item of new business is request consideration of a referral to the Planning Commission, a petition to rezone 1502 South McDuffie Street from R5 single-family residential to NC neighborhood commercial. Ms. Moore. Yeah, Mr. Mayor and Council, as always, this is the beginning of your uh, public process. 
purpose of, of your meeting tonight is so, so that the public is notified of this proposed zoning change. So we would recommend that you forward this to the uh, Planning Commission for their consideration on April 7th. Thank you. We have a first by Mr. Harbin. Second. Second by Mr. John Roberts. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously in regards to the referral to the Planning Commission. <clears throat> Our second item is to request consideration of capital improvement plan purchases. Mr. Moore. Uh, a couple of preliminary comments. Um, just to go back in the budget process and um, refresh your memory on the $5 a month, the capital equipment fee that you put on, uh, the nice thing about that is you can see that it's generating revenue to replace some much needed equipment. Some of that being your frontline garbage trucks, which you'll take up in the next item. The finance committee looked at this. This is the first round of equipment. Uh, that would be purchased roughly $560,000 that we're anticipating to be collected this year. You previously are approved $117,000 for five police cars. I'm pleased to say that those are now in the fleet and we've retired some, some older heav heavy maintenance vehicles. So what you have before you is a list and, and all the bids were taken. And I know there was some question about the business license administrative car, so let me address that and ask if you would. Uh, we certainly agree with the council members that was primarily brought up by Councilman um, Chapman. We'd like to ask you to approve all but that one and go back and look at uh, these uh, hybrid vehicle for administrative use. Uh, Mr. Curvin also asked about vehicles, others of similar usage in nature. Even though there are not any others in this first round, there'll be others subsequently like in building department, community development, those kind of things. We'd like to break those out of the uh, full equipment list and bring those back at a later date. So what we're asking you to do tonight, if it's okay, is to proceed with everything but that vehicle. And uh, you can see most of those are under state contract. Uh, we, we pretty much tried to adhere with what you've seen in the past, like in, in work trucks, making sure they're crew cabs so they have some ex additional use. A lot of these are dump trucks, mowing equipment, which we can certainly put to use uh, as soon as the growing season, which is about on us. Did I explain that okay and uh, ask if we could proceed? These are all budgeted items uh, in the order that were presented to the Finance Committee and the Capital Equipment, and they've seen about five years, and, and those will keep coming back. Hopefully, uh, in a matter of five years or so, we'll, we'll have a pretty good fleet. I would say that um I, I think we all understood if we have questions, the Finance Committee, uh, which consists of Mr. Curvin, Dr. Thompson, myself, and Mr. Mr. Robert, Roberts, John Roberts. John Roberts. We, we kicked this around uh, a good bit at our meeting, and we, I mean, as John said, we've got a good mechanism in place, and we'll be bringing other things to you. But having said that, any questions, comments? Yeah, just got one. Um, Stuart. What do we anticipate maybe... Um, we would get off all the vehicles that we're replacing through an auction and with that money, whatever you get, you know, whether it's 10, 15, $20,000, would that roll back into the capital improvement fund or where would that money? That would be correct. The way we do it now uh, is that all of it goes on egov or gov.com. And so it stays out there for a period for anybody anywhere to bid on those pieces of equipment then they're sold and then that money comes back in to the capital replacement fund i'm not sure what we uh, do we do we Sorry. put a minimum price on them that we ask we just say hey you get it five dollars ten dollars what, what do you do let me if we, we think it, I think, you know, with some of these vehicles, even though they got 100,000 miles, 108,000 miles on them, still, it's like you get 2,500 yeah. bucks. Yeah, well, to give you an idea, I'll ask Kerry, it's not a problem, the ones that, that are on here that will be auctioned, we'll just take that block and tell you when they're sold, we'll update you administratively on the email, and what kind of revenues we see from, from that. Good question, though, yes, but we would, yeah, if we get 10,000, the way we look at that, or 20,000, that's another vehicle that we can speed up the replacement sure. process. You know, a lot of this is really good. I mean, uh, not only with these vehicles, uh, even though that other than the business license car, they'll get better fuel economy because they're newer. 
but um, our, we expect our maintenance costs to go down tremendously by getting some of these older vehicles off the road. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Chad. I just have one question regarding the, the trash trucks. Is that, um, is that if, we, if we approve this tonight, how soon can we get those on the road? Cause Great question. Well, let me ask. Is there, um, we have hey, Carrie, come, come, come yeah, down for us. If yeah. the cabin chassis are available, it's uh, 90 to 120 days to put the garbage body on it. If they're not, then you're, usually it's 90 to 120 days to get the cabin chassis. Okay. I just, the sooner the better. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know. Uh, we know we have calls from council and constituents that those trucks are so old they leak uh, garbage fluids and stuff which aren't very pleasant and so uh, you know again we as we talked about this in the budget into the committee we have 10 trucks on the lot so we can be sure that four of them will crank and roll for the day and it's not uncommon that they'll stop on the route and we send one of the other 10 out there so these are your front line I do want to commend the carry. These are fully automated trucks, and some of the new features are uh, that on the side that doesn't have the arm, there is in some tight spots a, a, a special lifter. A cart tipper, yes. Yeah, they're just the, the, the second person on the truck could, could be out there and get that one over there. So we'll be careful of that for safety reasons, but it is a nice added feature. Any other questions, Ms. Horbin? With that, I'd like a motion we approve this, Mayor. Oh, first by Mr. Horbin. Second by the mayor pro tem. Further discussion? What, one other question. I know it's just in the police department. I know we're using that cargo van to transport federal prisoners. There's no money we can get from the Fed side to compensate. We have in the past, and it, again, it just depends. Uh, uh, we are always asking for funds for different things. What, let me go back. Councilman Stewart's asking, in the past, we've been fortunate that uh, Judge Anderson in particular has put in for some funding for those vans. We don't have any that's available at this time. We have asked. We'll continue to ask if those funds become available for this and some other improvements in the detention facilities. For a discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank pass you. Pass this unanimously. <coughs> um, Item three is request consideration of an ordinance authorizing the financing of financing of four garbage trucks. Mr. Moore. Uh, Mr. Mayor, in the uh, I'm going to go back to the previous documents for just a minute, and I believe uh, Councilman Chapman asked the question. But in there was uh, Kerry and his staff bid out the fully automated garbage trucks, and just want to go back. Uh, by your last action, you authorized Peterbilt of Columbia at $1,119,220 for the fully automated, four fully automated garbage trucks. They will replace a, two 1993 Fords, one 1995 freight liner, and one 2001 freight liner. So those are the four that will come off and probably some of our other backups, but these are the exact four that will take off. <clears throat> You'll buy the new ones. There'll be the, the, again, the Peterbilt with, I can't pronounce this, Labrie automated refuge bodies, and they're pretty much what you see that we're running now. Now, to get those, obviously $1,100,000 is more than your annual uh, five to 700 we predicted on the $5 fee, so you have to lease those trucks. And uh, what you have before you is you have to do that by ordinance. So you'll be passing the ordinance on first reading tonight and then Peggy has put together, and we'll send it to you, a schedule to give you a, an idea. Uh, and again, Councilman Chapman, we can order the trucks with a purchase order and get them underway while we go through the leasing process. Uh, you have first reading tonight. If everything goes according to plan, we'll have second and third reading on April 13th. Then we will distribute proposals to banks, primarily our local financial institutions. We really liked even those will probably come out of Columbia or somewhere out with their regional office, we want them to have a local presence for this financing, and we should get those based on our past. Uh, we'll have a, we'll open the bids on May the 19th. Uh, you are authorizing me. I will notify you who the low bidder is, so you'll know we'll have to come back on that. <clears throat> and then we'll have the closing by June. So that will be how that process works. And again, we're anticipating that there'll be $238,000 a year 
for five years, and the life expectancy on these trucks are seven to ten. So you'll have those paid off within their existing life. And then each year out of the six or seven or eight hundred thousand, whatever our fee generates, we'll be allocating two thirty eight to pay those. The good thing is next year about that same amount rolls off for the last lease purchase. So again, we would recommend this lease uh, purchase agreement if you'll pass ordinance fifteen oh four authorizing us to proceed with the bids and award, uh, then we'll move and have that second, third reading. Just to give you an idea, uh, Peggy said another city just did this, and they got 2% was the rate that was quoted on the lease. Yeah. Good. Uh, comments, questions? Make a motion we accept it as presented for general approval. Second. second. First by um, Ms. Chapman, second by Mr. Buck Roberts. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously on the first reading. We have one more item, a new business, and that item is request consideration of an appointment of a ministerial recorder for the municipal court. Mr. Moore. Mr. Mayor, the request here is actually to appoint Stacy Blair. Most of you know Stacy. He recently retired as a captain police department uh, as, a, as a third ministerial recorder. Uh, so that would be the recommendation, but while, if you don't mind, I would like to say, most of you have called or I've talked to you, that the municipal court system is progressing very nicely. Um, you know, with uh, Gertz and Matt Lawless, who you appointed earlier as uh, ministerial recorders, we are clearing out the bond hearings before 8 o'clock. Um, it's not often that I see anybody left in traffic court or other court past 9.30 anymore. Uh, and I would give a lot of thanks to the three judges you've appointed, the, uh, Thompson and King and Allen. They do a great job. They're each committed to one week of morning court a month. Uh, and I'm certainly expecting this to benefit uh, Judge Madison, give him some time away, because he certainly had no help for about the last year. So anyway, this is certainly a piece of the puzzle. Uh, Stacy will be paid the twenty dollars an hour that uh, the other ministerial recorders do. So we'd recommend that you officially appoint Stacy Blair as your third ministerial recorder. Thank you. Make a motion that we appoint Mr. Blair for our third ministerial recorder. Second by Mr. Stewart. Second by the mayor by Mr. Harbin. Further discussion? Y'all sound like all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Good to have Mr. Blair back on board with us. Administrative briefing, Mr. Moore. Just your calendar and a couple things as we wrap up this month. <clears throat> at the end of the week, Friday at 10 a.m. will be the official ribbon cutting for the Emerge at the Garage project. I don't know if you had a chance to be by there. It's certainly uh, uh, in full swing with your economic development office there and also Craig Kinley has been uh, doing some of the preliminary work on the eMERGE, and, and uh, we're really excited about that. It's certainly a nice piece for your downtown. looks to be a good use for the garage. With warmer weather, if you flip over to April, uh, I'll start with our every evening 6 to 9 block party. Cranks back up. Uh, nice event. Draws a lot of people downtown. We appreciate uh, Kerry Jones and others who, as volunteers, do that. But again, Kind of looking through, you'll see the Fair Housing National Community Development Week that Erica spoke to. The Anderson County Municipal Association is Thursday in Pelzer. A couple of things that the city does to complement what goes on and bring attention to Wren Park. Uh, the block party is certainly for a lot of people, but there are other opportunities to do. And you have on Wednesday the 15th, we're doing a three series of sounds in the park. That's our organization. And Wednesday night will be uh, jazz trio so a little different a little more laid back a little smaller crowd uh, so maybe you might enjoy that to, to come out and at uh, Wren Park and then Friday night will be our first movie night we have Big Hero 6 that will also be uh, in uh, Wren Park and then later on this month another really nice feature for downtown will be Art on the Town that's a cooperative effort between the city and the Anderson Arts Center where uh, art is displayed in public places as well as in the businesses so we encourage people to uh, walk through the downtown and visit the different businesses and see art so a lot going on in april uh, especially in and around the 
some of our city venues. That doesn't even count all the stuff that we're doing in recreation as far as a ball season cranking up and those kind of things. But that's all we have in a regular session. We do have two matters in executive session, a contractual matter on, on property, possible property acquisition and a personnel matter. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Stewart. Mr. City Manager, excuse my ignorance, but um, what does CWP stand for? Yeah. Rand Park. Okay. Not ignorant. I asked the same thing. I, I thought it was concealed weapons permit. I don't give a concealed weapons permit classes. Wednesday night. I'm glad. I wasn't the only one. That makes me feel better. I, I studied on the study on I finally gave up Mass Linden, she said. No, told me. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would entertain a motion to go in executive session. So moved. First by Mr. Stewart, second by Mr. Roberts. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? We stand in executive session. We'll ask go back. Yes. I would entertain a motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Uh, first by the mayor to pro tem, second by Mr. Buck Roberts. In executive session, we talked about a contractual matter in regards to possible property acquisition. Uh, we instructed, we had a, um, a review from the city manager um, in regards to the property, and we instructed the city attorney to go forward with the prospective seller to see if we can um, have a contract within the next couple of meetings. And also on the personnel issue, there's no decisions made on the personnel issue. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, first by Dr. Thompson. Second. Second by Mr. Chapman. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned.